It's another edition of the UTPA Women's Basketball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this guy... Larry Tidwell, head women's basketball coach of the UTPA Bronx. Very successful head women's basketball coach of the UTPA Bronx, as the Bronx just clinched their first winning season at the NCAA Division I level with an 84-82 double overtime heart-pumping <laughs> thriller at Kansas City. Congratulations, well, Coach. Well, I appreciate that. The girls uh, answered the call. I mean, it was one of those deals where it was back and forth. Uh, matter of fact, we were down nine at half at one point, I think with 14 minutes left, we were down 11. And uh, I brought a team off the bench that consisted of Stephanie Onyeje at the point, Troy Swain at the two, Shazay Wright at the three, uh, Sherelle, uh, Hilda Kirchner's daughter at the four and Sherelle Price at the five and they came in and got us caught up in a hurry and uh, went on about a 17 to four run and uh, just led us and that just shows you that we do have depth on our team and, and it lets these uh, starters know that if they don't perform they're going to be replaced pretty quick in the lineup because we're at tournament time and you're one and done. And so all of the learning is over. I mean, we're ready to, to play some ball, but um, I have a green team, a white team, and the white team was just outstanding in bringing us back. And then when we got back, then the green team stepped it, stepped it up quite a bit, and uh, we had a very exciting game, and Troy Swain hmm. made two unbelievable plays, a left-handed layup. As time expired, we send it to overtime. And then she had a three-pointer with one-tenth of a second left on the clock. I didn't think Shantae Goff was ever going to get it to her. <laughs> and uh, hit a three-pointer to uh, solidify the 84-82 to win and, again, put us at 17-13, to the most victories ever in the history of the program. And that's a, a great feeling, not only for a, from a coach's perspective, but for these players who work hard and do everything necessary to make us a great program. I'm happy to do it for our administration who works so hard, all the people at UTPA, just to bring a winning program to this campus and knock on wood, we're gonna keep it going and get into the postseason. I like the sound of that. Postseason at UTPA, that, that's never been done. Well, the road to that starts on Wednesday when you face the exact same team, Kansas City, <coughs> in the WAC tournament. Uh, it's such a rare thing and college sports it you know obviously it can happen because it is happening well, but what's ironic too is it's uh, happening with the men yeah yeah our men beat umkc <laughs> saturday at the field house here at utpa with two seconds on the clock and i called hips and i said man that that was you know you made it easy i said i got down to one tenth of a second well it wasn't two seconds <laughs> it was two tenths of a second so you only beat him by a tenth <coughs> oh i tell you i saw boga hit that on the news last night and Happy for uh, Coach Hipster and his staff. It is such a pleasure to work with such a good staff, a good man that Coach Hipster is, and, and Andy and Jay and Willie. I mean, it, it makes it pretty special coming to work every day when the people you work alongside of are really good friends. Now, you guys must have some kind of s secret thing going on because on your senior day, Sherelle Price hits the buzzer beater, and then on their senior day, Shaq Boga hits the buzzer beater. Something's a little fishy there. Well, I tell you what, we bring it, uh, we, we have a lot of excitement because I was looking back at our, the history of our games this year on the women's side, and we have like, I think it's eight or nine that are decided by three points or less, and a yeah. lot of those are in the last few seconds. So it's Three been of the last five games. Years. Yeah, it's been one of those years where, you know, three in the last five games are last second shots. I mean, the only, you know, uh, and thank goodness we were on the top end of that. So <laughs> that makes that 17 sweeter. Well, now you mentioned Shantae Goff coming alive late in that game. You know, she finished with 18 points. 11 of those points came in the two overtime sessions. Yeah, she uh, sort of wanted the ball in her hands, and I, I, like to, I like to see it when she steps up and says, Coach, I want it at the top. And then she came up and said, Hey, I, I want the ball. I said, Okay, well, let's go get it. And she had some penetration, and got to the rim and made layups and then what a great assist she had to Troy. Troy was wide open in the corner and uh, that's some spot, that's a spot that I really like Troy in is in that deep corner because a lot of people have to cover that with their back, you know, with their forwards or centers and mm -hmm. Troy gets a shot off pretty quick and she was wide open and 
like I said, the old ball went through the net and the horn went off and you went, wow, that was close. But uh, golf stepped it up, but gosh, the, the effort you had from Tanisha Walker. I mean, she was back home in Kansas. All of her family was there. She had 13 points and oh, and I'm so happy she's been picked for the all defensive team. I mean, that is so cool. She worked so hard. And then Brittany Bush, her family came down. She had 12 points, fouled out in the second half and didn't have her for either overtime and the gosh I looked at it, I was watching a video I had Shantae jumping at the first overtime and Rock the second <laughs> overtime in the in the center but you know it's uh, one thing that we do we have a lot of depth I, I tell you Shazay Wright Sherelle Price came in oh my gosh did they play well I mean just solid Stephanie Onyeje did some stuff that she needs to be doing all the time and then Troy hits a big sh hit, hits a big shots Hilder solid rebounding. We uh, we did a good job, and then we turned them over 22 times. And when we can do that, that's a that's a plus for us. Yeah, you're now ninth in the nation in turnover margin. It's just uh, seemingly every game you're forcing them, and you're not committing too many. Well, you know we we had a few late, you know about four really unforced turnovers that that really does aggravate me. But uh, they do handle the ball well, and that all starts with our point guard at Yonder Nolan who I, I think is all conference point guard. I mean, because her, her ratio of assist to turnovers is just unprecedented. Doesn't score that much, but she knows how to run her offense. So we do appreciate what she does. And when she does hit her shot, she hits them in oh, bunches. She does. Yeah, she had five against MKC and her family, again, she's a Kansas girl was there. And, and it's good to see us be successful when the families are there. Absolutely. Everybody's cheering, everybody's crying at the end. So I like stuff like that. So. But we're headed to uh, Vegas now, and it's time to get our game face on for a run and get into postseason. Uh, uh, you know, five seniors, so they all played last year's WAC tournament game. So, mm -hmm. do you think that that was a, that that's good learning experience that, for them to lean on when they head into Wednesday's well, game? Well, we talked about it last night. We had a team menu last night, and Cheryl Price made a good point. So did Shazay Wright. That you know, we we played New Mexico State the first round, and at half we were up like 14. And we're playing extremely well, and then we went cold in the second half. New Mexico State got hot, and I believe we ended up losing by eight points or so in the first round. Uh, I know that was a game where Brittany Bush didn't get to play, had back spasms. Uh, KK Boyd got sick and didn't hardly play the second half, and had a lot of different things happen to us. But we know now you don't take anything for granted, and you just keep playing hard. Well, that's a good way to look at it. And uh, whack tournament quarterfinals, because I think uh, teams always learn every March. Just got to win one, and yeah. then you got to win the next. But like I said, you know, we talked earlier, one and done. Yeah. If you don't win, you're gone. And so we want to stay up in Vegas and enjoy all the festivities, all the things that they have planned. Uh, again, really got to give kudos to the WAC Conference for having such a great tournament and a great atmosphere, great environment. And it makes it fun for people to come up. I know I've got a lot of family coming. I got cousins, I got friends, and I don't think they're coming to see me. I think they're coming <laughs> to see a little ball and they're coming to see uh, Las Vegas. So, what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Is that right? Well, if that's true, then oh, nobody I from the WAC gets the, or oh, the Pac-12 or the Mountain West gets to go to the tournament. I, I hear you, but all <laughs> I can tell you, Jonah, hey, what goes up there stays up there, okay? I'd hate for your wife to find out what all we plan on doing. She's coming. Uh-oh. Well, then that's good. That's good. <laughs> So she'll, she'll know everything we do. <coughs> Not everything. No, we'll, we'll put her over here doing something. We'll have her crocheting or knitting or doing something. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but yeah, we're, we're looking for a great time there. And again, we appreciate all what UTPA does because we, we do go this tournament. We do go first class. And that's what it's all about. First class, man, they've got me in the last row, you know, in between the bathroom and the, and the seats that don't fold. Remember now, I'm nice. so old that we used to play basketball tournaments outside. So, <laughs> hey, on the asphalt. So, hey, don't be spoiled. Be happy with what we got. <laughs> Absolutely, but, I'll uh, take but the But Orleans, uh, what a great arena. And it, it's conducive to basketball, and that's what you like. And, and we're looking for a great, great time in, uh, in the city that never sleeps. You guys are going to New York? Uh, is that where it, maybe I've got the wrong one. <laughs> But I know I've never been to New York very much, but I know Las Vegas never sleeps either. So Ooh. we're looking for a, a good time up there. And 
But we're going up there. We had our team meeting last night, and, and we're going up there with a purpose. I mean, you know, it's great to go to Las Vegas, but we want to win. And those, those seniors, you know, like I said, Cheryl Price, Shazé, Tanisha, Teandra, Brittany, all had some really smart things to say last night about what we got to do to get you focused. You know, we'll have all of our parents there. A lot of friends are going to be there, but they know they got to be focused and they can't worry about all that other stuff. They got to be locked in on what we're trying to do. Now, on the player side, we know they have to just worry about the next opponent one game at a time. But from a coaching perspective, you know, you you don't have much turnaround time. You could play three games in four days. So, uh, you know, obviously you've already scouted all these teams, but do you update everybody? Uh, we so update ready? everybody. We redo our scouts, but our, our players are involved in that too. Our mm -hmm. players watch a lot of videotapes. And they need to know who their opponents are, how they're going to do it on a certain situation. And and uh, Anthony Anderson does a really good job for me on the videotape part of it. Uh, Hannah Burleson handles all of our itineraries and things along that line. But Hannah also does a really good job. She she made a key play against UMKC the other night. She calls my out of bounds plays for me. And she's a very young coach, but I have confidence in her. She made a key call that got us a good basket to keep us in the lead. And then Gabe will do scouting, and of course he's uh, heads up our recruiting also. And I keep them extremely busy, but our players get involved too because we do have a lot of video sessions and we go over stuff and we tell them what they're doing good, but we also let them know what we need to get better at. So the WAC just announced uh, that there you have four All WAC selections this year: Shante Goff on the first team, Brittany Bush on the second team. Uh, Tonisha Walker, the all-defensive team, and then uh, Hilda Bjork, Karchin's daughter, all-newcomer team. Well, that's uh, excellent honors for those four young ladies. Uh, like I said, I've, I've got a few more that could be mentioned in that array. I wish they had a sixth player of the year for our conference because that, that would have to be hands down going to, to uh, Shazé Wright for us. Shazé Wright's real price means so much to our team. And so those are nice honors, but the honors that they get are all indicative of what we do as a team. And so we all play for the name on the front of the jersey. There's no question about that. But again, congratulations to Shante, first team, Brittany, second team, Tanisha Walker, all defensive team, and Hilder, I'm not going to say that big long word, uh, Carson's daughter, uh, to the newcomer conference team. Very proud of those selections and very proud of each and every player that I have on this roster. Well, those players and all their teammates will be back at it on Wednesday at 7 Pacific Time, 9 Central. 7 Pacific Central. Time, yes, for sure. Just always trying to change those times in my head, especially now with Daylight Savings Time and all that. Oh, yes. <laughs> when they face off against Kansas City, UTPA the three seed in the tournament, Kansas City the six seed, that'll be Wednesday. And then winner goes on Friday to take on the winner of the Bakersfield-Chicago State matchup with the championship game then coming on Saturday. Quarterfinals and semifinals can be viewed through the WAC Digital Network. WACsports.com slash watch championship game will be on ESPNU. Don't get ESPNU? Hey, no worries. We've got a link to uh, an audio broadcast courtesy of moi, utpbrox.com. There you go. So make sure you watch on the Digital Network the first two games and if and when they're playing for the championship, I'll rejoin you all on the airwaves. And even if you get ESPNU, just mute ESPNU and listen to me instead because, hey, Hey, got to listen to the J-Man. <laughs> Heart and soul of UTPA basketball, all athletic. We're going to give you credit for all that. Wow, As a matter of fact, hey, while we're sitting here, I, I wish our men's basketball team the very best. Uh, what a great job that Dan Hipster does. Hey, I want the baseball team, Manny and that crew down there. Boy, they're, they're on a roll. What a great team. Our tennis teams, our golf teams, men's and women are going to be strong this year. And you got to go the X-Man in track and field. They're getting ready for indoors, and I really appreciate what X-Man X -Man does with our indoor and outdoor track, and our new volleyball coach, Todd Lauer, is going to fit in great. I mean, we got a got a good thing going here, and uh, really do appreciate all the support that we get from our student athletes for each other, and that's always a cool thing. You know, we've had the volleyball team decorate our locker room. Everybody drops a note or something. Hey, coach, good job, and and again, you, you go back to you enjoy who you work with, and we've got some really great people that we work with. And as soon as our season's over, you can count on me. I'm going to be in those baseball 
bleachers out there, and I'm going to be yelling at the coach to put my son in. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't have one, but I'm going to be on him, okay? I'm going to be after him in the birth joke and say, hey, but they're going to be an outstanding team, and we, we wish everybody the best out here in Bronkland, and uh, really can't wait to go see our track teams run, and uh, I enjoy I enjoy a little tennis. Now, I talked to Brandon and Stephanie, you know, about the underhand serve is coming back. And Somebody they, used yeah, that that's recently. Right, that's right. Yeah. We need to use that underhand serve. But, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Bronx fan, and we wish everybody the best. Well, hope we'll be back with you next week previewing the Bronx first ever postseason game. Well, I tell you what, I hope that does happen, and I will finish on this. If we get in the postseason, I hope we can arrange it because I'm going to tell you, our band, our pep band is the absolute best, and our cheerleaders and dance team is the absolute best. So we hope to get them. Maybe we'll get a home game. You never know. Could happen. You never know. But hopefully we're in that NCAA tournament, and we'll go wherever they tell us to go. Absolutely. So, but uh, we're all in. And, hey, I'm uh, pleased to uh, be a part of the Bronx Nation. Go Bronx. Let's go to postseason. <laughs>